Good morning, good afternoon, student. This is Professor Sistrom, and I'm coming to the entire student body. Now, this particular vlog that I'm sending out, I'm sending out to everyone just to give everyone a view of the different technologies that they will be learning. So, I have various classes and I thought it would be a good idea to start sending out information to the various classes so they can start seeing what many of our programs have to offer. I want to talk about these particular tools that we use. So this is one of the tools we use and it is called Packet Tracer. Now, to all the students out there, which is in many different classes, this is just educational information. It may not apply to your class. I'm just giving you educational information so you can learn the many different tools that you will be using when you go into the IT industry. Quote unquote, it may not be for your class, so don't have a panic if you see this information. I want to teach you a little bit about networking. I also want to start getting you to focus in on a broader view of the networking industry. With that being said, just sit back from time to time and pay attention to these video logs. They're going to teach you stuff. So when you do take these particular classes, if you're not already in one, you would know exactly what is required. This is an application that is called Packet Tracer. And you're going to see many of these vlogs come out, but I want to introduce you to the tools and how we use these tools. Now, with that being said, we're going to work on a particular project. We're just going to skim through the information on how to use Packet Tracer. Normally, I give this lab to students so they can get a real decent idea of how to use Packet Tracer. As you can see in the objectives up here, the purpose of this is for a person to investigate the bottom toolbar which will be down here if you follow in my mouse corner it will be also to invest investigate devices in a wiring closet so if i come up here and click on logical view it'll show a logical view but if i click on physical view it'll show a physical view of how two different locations are connected but I can even scale down into a real view of this particular wiring closet. So if I double click on this, this will show me the many different devices that you will use in here. So this is exploring the logical view and a physical view of this particular network. And this is a typical networking closet. You also have uh devices within here right here i got a, a shelf with just many different devices on that are not being used and as we proceed on i'm gonna start using probably one or two of the devices i'm also going to configure a host name on here so you can see how the host name will be configured but within the document that you are download to your desktop you answer particular questions in here. So if you see something with a question mark, you know you gotta put an answer on there and also give it back to me so I can take a look at it. So let's proceed with some of the networking points in here so you can see how to do particular things. Now, once again, the networking model in this packet tracer demonstrates physical mode and a logical mode. So as you can see, if I click here on logical, it show me the many different devices and also show equipment that's sitting to the side. If I click physical view, 
I can go deep inside of the actual network. And that's important for you to be able to see. Okay, so let's move on. Now, I'm not going to go through everything step by step. That's something you can actually read. But the particulars are important. I don't already showed you how to go from physical view to logical view. I demonstrated that skill set. And as you see, I'm clicking on this back arrow button to actually go back to the original picture. You can see that in most cases, networks are connected via underwater lines, satellite lines, any way that an organization deem they should be connected. Okay, and in this particular case, you can see this is Alaska United West, United West, and they got some cable running underwater. Okay, this is a true fact. This is how things happen. Okay, and I can click on this city view and see different things within the city. Data center, I can see what's going on with the data center. Click on the data center and see all the different servers that's in this data center. Now, of course, this will be a small data center, but in reality, this is how data centers will look. I'm, I'm shrinking it down so you can see a better picture of it. So just remind yourself that these are the things you'll be able to see. Now I can go back and begin to look at the overall picture and see the exact the exam that's right here, the example that's here, excuse me. So another thing is I can go in here and make some connections and that's what we're teaching you. We're teaching you how to work in a real world situation. So if I click on here and go back into the branch office, I'm going to blow that up a little so you can see it clearly. I can now take a server or router from off the shelf. In this case, it'll be a router. We're going to call it the backup router and simply just put it right here inside of the rack. Now, this is called the rack. The rack is where everything is connected and put together. I also could click on this particular backup router so you can see the more things that connection. You can see also the ports. I can actually snatch one of these cards out. I can turn on this router. I can snatch that out and put it down here. And as you can see, it's a blank spot. But remember, you have to have a router turned off before you start taking cards out of here. And if you look over here, you see multiple cards that you can use. At the bottom right here, when I click on here, you're going to see things pop up. And these are type of connection cards that we use to have our various connections. In this case, we're going to put this card back in there. And all I got to do is, do is drag and drop it. And there it is. So that's important for you to know. Now, I can turn this on and you may see a little green light right there. I can blow it up to where you can see the green light uh, and show you more, but just know you have to turn it on once you put a access card in there. And then you can go to CLI and you'll see it actually functioning and working. That's important. So, and we're gonna come back to this because I wanna make some configuration changes. So I'm going to close that. Now, I want to configure this particular router. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to turn it around to the rear. And as you can see, there's, there's the rear. But I'm going to come up here and click on a USB cable. And then I'm going to make a connection in here. So I'm going to look for the USB. And as you can see, it. It, it, you can see a little light come up right there and when I click it, it's going to turn green to let me know I got a connection. So I'm going to close that and then I'm going to come down to the PC and do the same thing here. Now, if I couldn't see it, I could blow that PC up a little so I can see it better. As you can see, I blew it up a little and then I connect right here on a US port 
with the PC. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now you see this cable right here that's connecting those two different devices, okay? And that's how we do it in the real world. In the real world, you just simply cable the devices up. Okay, and it's explaining all the different points of what I'm actually doing here. I'm not reading through it step by step, but you actually see it. But in this point right here, I wanna go onto the actual PC and then go into desktop and then in my terminal, do a configuration of that particular PC, that router. So I'm gonna go from the PC to the router and do a configuration. Now, as you can see, I have right here router. So I wanna enable that router by typing enable and you can see it listed right here. I'm actually following these steps that go to word enable and then I'm going to do configure terminal. So I'm going to type in the word config, configure, because I don't want to do shortcuts. I'm teaching you not to do shortcuts right now because I know you're going to get jammed up and I'm going to hit enter. Now, once I hit enter, I want to put this command in. If you understand this command here, the first part of it said host name, which is a command, and then the name of the particular router. Okay, so just remember that. I am about to type that in. So I'm gonna say host name, and this is just a basic configuration of this particular router. And I'm gonna try my best to type the name in correctly exactly like they have it. So we name our routers and our switches so that individuals will know exactly what router and switch they're working with. That's why we put these names on there. As you can see, the name is in there and I'm gonna click in to get out of it. And now you see that the, this particular router, which is the backup router, has a name now. Okay, so these were just some of the things that you will be able to do. Remember, all I did was grab a cable cord off the shelf. I went over to here on the shelf right here and grabbed the router, and then I put the router in and configured it. This was a short lesson on how to use the logical view and the physical view of a packet tracer. And remember, I'm going to demonstrate Packet Tracer more and more. Now you can see that this router, which is over here, is connected to this laptop. Okay? And just make sure you know that. Now, you have multiple devices down here that you'll be able to use. And we're going to talk more and more about these different devices. We're going to talk about the routers. We're going to talk about the PCs or end devices. And we're gonna talk about switches. As you can see, we got switches down here. We're gonna learn about each and every one of these. With that being said, this is Professor Sistrunk, and we're gonna consistently learn more and more about routers and switches. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.